Welcome. Welcome, everybody, to episode 140 of The China Show. Some of you may know this as ADV Podcast, but that time has passed. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, speaking of past, you know, the ghost of Christmas past and all that stuff, Scrooge. It's a good segue. Um, yeah, it's uh, kind of a Christmas special today. Yeah, I'd say it is a Christmas special. Other yeah. than the horrible, the horrible main, awful <laughs> main topic that is just full of death and sadness. <laughs> yes. Separated from that. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. Yeah. I would say 70% fun, 30% misery. Yeah. Which so, is kind of the China show in a nutshell. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. So uh, I guess we should just saunter right into sure. it today with what's new, where we tell you what's new with regards to China and other things. And um, well, we've got this fantastic poster, by the way, that yeah. somebody on our subreddit made for us. Well, I don't, I don't know if it was if they made it. They posted it at least. Well, posted it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> we all know that uh, China likes to put out these scary sort of propaganda to show how how scary the Chinese go. Yes. I mean, sorry, the the U.S. military is. So what they did was they created this picture, which you can see over here, of the U.S. Navy with this like demon aircraft carrier that's i don't know got teeth like a shark yeah. and it's like demon in the clouds and all these guns it's and amazing. planes it's really cool so somebody went and actually kind of turned it into an official navy recruitment <laughs> poster <laughs> which i think is kind of i clever. mean it's too cool to be anti-us propaganda it's pro us it's very pro i want to be on that team yeah i mean who doesn't it's awesome yeah you know yeah. i can just hear the eagle screech For you sure. know what what would be like a Nash, like a patriotic animal of of the sea, a shark. I guess a shark. Which is what that aircraft yeah. carrier looks it's like. True. It's true. Yeah. So it'd be like a shark screech. Yeah. Sharks go rawr, don't they? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Their vocal cords. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah I forgot yeah. fish. Speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's <laughs> let's move on. Can you explain <laughs> this tattoo? Yeah. So this is not a Chinese person. It's just I included it because it has Chinese on it. Yes. Uh, it says Jia Jia Ting, which Honestly, every time I see Chinese tattoos now, it's so hard for me not to laugh. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of the time it doesn't make sense. This one does mean family, but yeah. it's it's weird. It's too it's too normal of a word. Yes. You know, does that make sense? Mm. You know, when you, you see the characters jatting, people look look at that symbol. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just a word. Dude. I know it is. It's a bit weird. It's not used in colloquial. That's really no. just like a dictionary. Yeah. It's just like a it's a word, right? Yeah. Anyway, it's like if somebody got in English familial structure. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. Well, that's said. pretty much how it is. <laughs> like family tree, but yes. there's no tree. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it just says family mm. tree. Yeah. It's a very like clinical way of saying it. Yeah. yeah. Now, perhaps worse is the tattoo of Lionel Messi here with the World Cup in his hands. I'm going to call him Lionel Massive. Um, <clears throat> it is a bit messy, let's be honest. It is a mess. What have they done to him? The perspective of his head <clears throat> versus his hands. What did you say he looked like? A he looks like a Russian invader. <laughs> like a Russian, like a <laughs> orc. troll. Yeah. Like yeah. Orc. yeah. <laughs> Just saying, he does. Yeah. There are, by the way, I'm talking specifically about the invaders, not the nice Russian yeah, people. Yeah, no, the bad ones. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. So since this is <laughs> since this is a Christmas special, let's show you some uh, some Christmas spirit coming out of China here. All right. <laughs> I love that. Can you go back to that? Real yeah, quick? yeah, sure, sure. I'll go back. I love that because because it's serious. Yeah. If it was just a like an uncle, like a this is a Laban uncle. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In winter attire. Yeah. Uh, if it was just him messing around and hitting it around and joking, it would be like whatever. I wouldn't have included mm -hmm. it. But he's dead serious because Chinese people have been told uh, to reject uh, Christmas or Western holidays in general. Yeah. So they have these, they actually stage these protests. And I, I, at first I thought this was parody until I saw some of the other protests that have been coming out. Yeah. Uh, from Ais and, and Shushu. So we say like Laoban, like Uncle Laobans and, and some Ais now, this, protesting this, this kind of thing does happen probably every other year or so. Yeah. You see a bit of a yeah. flare up of this. But, you know, from my experience, people in China love to celebrate anything. Yeah. Yeah. And they love to celebrate Christmas. Oh, they yeah. don't, it's not religious. No. They don't go sit and talk about Mary and Jesus no. and some animals in a barn somewhere. Sure. What they do is they go out and they see lovely decorations and they buy stuff and they take part in the sort of capitalist sure. side of Christmas. I mean, the, probably even the majority don't. Well, but I mean, the, they, the but they enjoy it. I'm enjoy saying because it. yeah. it's there. They, it's they there. go to the malls yeah. and it's... For sure. 
And I remember specifically in 2007, was it? I think it was 2007. I went to Xi'an on Christmas Eve. Did you um, find any wild mushrooms? Or? No, but that was uh, when I was going on the rapist bodyguard thing. Right. And the city was alive. This is Christmas Eve. And it was just people having a massive party. And they were throwing fireworks in the middle of the crowds and stuff, which sure. I thought was a bit irresponsible. Um, remember when they threw them at us as we were riding our yes, motorcycles yes, the whole time? I remember that. We were dodging them. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, what I'm saying is it's an excuse for especially young people to have a party. Yeah. Just so, like Halloween is in the, in the West. Yeah. Let's be honest. You know, Halloween, people go dress up and get drunk or whatever. Kids enjoy it for their thing, sure. but I'm talking about like young adults. Sure, yeah, yeah. It's God, and yeah. yeah, exactly. And there's no like religious thing behind it, or anything. No. it's just kind of like a go and have fun party, sure. right? That's what Christmas is in China. Yeah. It's just kind of a have fun thing. But every once in a while, because of course it's popular, right? Yeah. Every once in a while, the sort of older government people and the like Lao Bans like this guy, they're like, no, that's not okay. Yeah. You know. You must celebrate our Chinese festivals. Sure. Sorry, and those, I got she in my eyes. Okay, good. Those Western festivals are no good. And I mean, sometimes it's just people striking out on their own, but sometimes it is a government mandate, you know, and they teach it in yeah, schools. Yeah, for sure. Like they'll go through initiatives where Xi Jinping will say, okay, now it's time to go back on that thing that I said in Xi Jinping thought that says reject Western holidays or foreign festivals, as they say, yeah. and embrace or only celebrate Chinese holidays. Yes. And it's a real brainwashing campaign that they do make children chant in the schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've actually got, um, yeah. we got some footage of that. Xianta. <laughs> okay, I just want to go back to that because, you know, we both got kids, right? And I know that they learn in school um, about all different holidays. Huh? Including um, Chinese? Yeah, yeah. Chinese, they, they make a big thing out of the Chinese Spring Festival holiday, and they make lanterns yeah. and all that kind of stuff in their little kindergarten classes. Even here, I mean, like, we've had an influx of Chinese immigrants. Yeah. Um, and so they cater to them, and they respect But yeah, tradition. I mean, I remember in South Africa, when I was a little kid, mm. I remember making those paper lanterns. Yeah, I did too. You know? And Actually, that's... I got a book out. I'm going to tell a yeah, quick yeah. story. Sure. I got a book out from uh, the library. It was called Moi Moi. Mm -hmm. And it was about a little girl who s celebrates her Chinese heritage or whatever. Yeah. And I thought it was so cool. It made me very interested in, in China. Mm -hmm. But I hadn't finished the book. And then, like towards the end of the book, it teaches you that Moi Moi actually means like little girl, little, little sister. And Moi so Moi? Yeah. Oh, it's Moi, Cantonese. Moi Moi in Cantonese, yeah. yeah. And so I told everyone in my class... I was like, I want my new nickname to be Moi Moi. And so I finished the book and then everyone figured it out and they all made fun of me and called me Moi Moi for a while. Yeah. But anyway, that being it's said, good. that we learned about Chinese culture even in the early 90s. Yeah, mine is in the 80s. In the 80s, right? Yeah. I remember building those lanterns and, you know, the little stick and walking sure. around. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, diversity is kind of celebrated. I mean... In the States, yes. in my kids' school, they learn about all the Mexican stuff too, mm -hmm. which I have no idea about because sure. I'm, not, I'm not American. I can't speak Spanish or mm -hmm. anything. Um, but, you know, they do all that stuff in the class and, and everything from all over the world. Yeah. In China, it's like reject foreign holidays, celebrate only our... Just imagine if that was like that in the States, for instance. Yeah. You know, anything that's not like American... You know, like Independence Day or, you know, Easter or, you know, Christian sure. type things. Just it's not allowed. Imagine that it teaching brainwashing kids. Sense. So, I mean, you have to take a look at it from that point of view. It's actually a horrible thing to force children to reject it other is. cultures. I mean, think about it. Like, I, mm -hmm. you know, I grew up in, in rural New York, right? Mm -hmm. I know probably just as much about Mexico's holidays as I do about my own culture's holidays. Because... Yeah. We had Hispanic kids at school, and that's part of the curriculum. Yeah. Now, what the equivalent of China is doing is taking the most popular thing that maybe some of their citizens would be interested in and saying, no, that's not allowed, and it's bad. Yeah. Imagine saying that to someone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's insane. It is. So here we've got a little group of uh, IEs, as we say, aunties and mm -hmm. so on, going around uh, doing their thing where they're like basically going to a shop and forcing them to take down a Christmas tree. <laughs> You see that? Like you pause there. They force this shop owner yes. to take down a Christmas tree, and they're saying, you know, only celebrate Chinese yeah. holidays. So rejecting uh, guo, the Western. Guo, <laughs> what a yeah, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. it's like they're um, just and look at them waving their flags. 
they're being all patriotic and you don't want that yeah it's your it means yeah. like only celebrate chinese holidays it's that's a good way it to translate yeah it, right? now the thing is like if you look at it it's like you've got a mob of these patriotic people coming around right. with their chinese flags forcing shops to take down Christmas I mean, decorations. it's just ridiculous. Now, this does again doesn't represent. This, the this is people. not from this year, by the way. This, no, no, this no. footage is from like a couple of years ago. But like we say, it flares up. It does because you think it goes away and then they bring it back. Yeah, every time, and then it's like, oh, you start to see the Christmas trees kind of appearing again sure. at the malls and stuff. Then there'll be another government push or yeah. another big interest group, and people go around and do this crap. It's really annoying. It's super <laughs> annoying. It's like let them have a Christmas tree if they want. <laughs> they're not. They're not preaching religion to you. You know what I mean? No. Geez, imagine if like they hung up like lanterns here during Chinese New Year, which they do, by the way, mm -hmm. in parks and mm -hmm. at universities and everything. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, you can see celebration of Chinese New Year. They got Chinatowns and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Just imagine people went around like and they were like smashing them down and like forcing people to take lanterns sure. down and stuff. It's the same idea. For sure. It's actually a scary thing. Yeah. Um, and it's something that I would hope the world would be working to go against rather than encouraging like China does. I agree. Mm. So did you fix it or what? I did. I, uh, I thought it was not in the holiday spirit. So yeah, so it's, it's Christmas special. Yeah, yeah, so what are we doing about that? It's very simple. We have a Merry Christmas from the China Show. We want you guys to know that we appreciate you. Yeah. And uh, we're so glad you're here with us. And... You know, honestly, we didn't expect this show to become our mainstay, but this is our this is what we do now. Yeah. Um, it was our side project and is now our full project. We're so happy to have you guys here. Whether it's the holiday season or the middle of summer, we're happy to have you guys uh, on the China Show. Yeah. We wish uh, each and every one of you guys a happy holidays. doesn't matter what you believe in or what you follow. Uh, yeah. It's always good to spread kindness throughout the world. Yeah. And uh, what you believe. tolerance. Probably don't do this though <laughs> and this is uh so there's a huge outbreak right now we're going to cover that yeah yeah it's uh, in china but what's going on is the government this is in hefei in anhui mm -hmm. uh, they're going around the government these are those communist uniforms and they put down a med kit and they take a picture so go back real quick i think what you need to notice is you, remember we've shown quite a few <laughs> times how propaganda works is they will take photos of yeah you know, that's what I was trying to point out yeah. yeah they take photos of um like health workers like struggling or something yeah. but it's just a show right yeah. what they're doing is they're taking a photo of um a health worker dropping off medicine yeah med kits but so, you see that's what the other person is there for is to take this yeah she's photo. blocking her yeah yeah for propaganda um, so they're taking the photo be like yep we dropped it off but watch what happens this is uh on a, like a ring doorbell yeah kind of version yeah uh, so she takes, she goes, look, okay, pose to the picture. It's like, uh, pose again, door. another picture. Okay. okay, okay, let's go. Oh, one uh, more, that wasn't one good one enough. Yeah, let's get another one. Okay. Okay, moving on. Yep. So they go to the next door and take the photo. Yes, we, we took, we put med kits on each door. Yeah. Um, I just want you to know, I mean, this is one little slice of life. Mm -hmm. This is really a great analogy for how China works. Yeah. Um, if you, I'm going to say this later and it'll have more context, but if you're believing China at this point or the mm. Chinese government, I mean, you're actually like really dumb. Yeah. They, they've lied about everything since day one. They always do. And yeah. um, it's unfortunate. We don't want them to lie. You know, we, we both have a big vested interest in China, always did. But, you know, it's unfortunate that every single time the Chinese government makes a statement, it's usually a contradiction or a lie. Yeah. Andrew Hardesty says three out of ten needs a long chain of people passing it down the corridor. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> what they do. Mm -hmm. Yep. Get more hands on deck. Came across this fantastic, um, <coughs> this fantastic propaganda the other day. Now, look, when it comes to disabled um, accessibility in China for disabled people, it doesn't exist. No. It just doesn't. Nope. And it's quite a shock because if you go to Hong Kong, you'll see it's everywhere. For sure. It's very well set up for disabled people and yeah. you know wheelchair ramps and everything. As soon as you cross into mainland China, it doesn't exist. No. And um, you know it's, it's an awful reality that disabled people are hidden away if they even exist yeah. most of the time. Because you know with a one-child policy, if they detect there's going to be anything wrong with your, your child, um, it's usually aborted. Mm. And something else I found out is that if you do have a disabled child, you are allowed to have another one. Mm -hmm. You know, under well, the one there, under the one child there policy. Is no one child I'm policy. saying like yeah, 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 sure. back then, sure. which wasn't long ago. Yeah, yeah. It was like a couple of years ago now. Sure. Um, so when and I have met disabled people in China, but they're hidden away. Yeah. 
So you don't see them in public. You nope. don't see them. There's no reason for them to have any accessibility stuff. But of course, they want to try and change this image. So here's a fantastic example of that. It, I'd like us to all take a look at this picture. Here you have some bus staff about to push a guy up a ramp into a bus. Yeah. I don't know if anyone can notice the problem, though. Is anyone, can someone leave a comment in the... Uh, already did. Oh, you already, you already figured it out? Yeah. What are you digging for down there, by the way? Some gold? Okay, all right. Um, there is a freaking pole. You want to be off? Oh, you want to blow your nose? You bowing Jowza again? Yep. There's a pole in the way, okay? So that guy's not going anywhere. I don't see Chinese people. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, but seriously, okay, there's a pole, like a, a handrail or whatever you want to call it. That wheelchair cannot go in there. On top of that, that ramp is too steep. <laughs> it's just far too steep. Like, it's I not... I comment, but I won't read it. Okay, all right. I can guess. No, I probably can. Anyway, the thing is, um, this is typical of China's propaganda. And look, they post this out there. Yeah. They post it out here. Um, and it's just not okay. But it also shows you how blazing they are with this stuff. They're like, okay, we just need to take a photo op for propaganda. There we go. Post it out there. Doesn't matter. You know? Anyway, let's uh, stop. Okay. Yeah. I just, it was good. Yeah, I'm sure it was. No. It's a 5G ramp, by the way. Okay, good. Slippery slope that we're going down here. This guy over here is uh, the next thing that we have to I'm just going to say it. What? I'm going to say what I like, because everyone's just going to jump to the wrong conclusion. Well, what is it? Somebody said, I'm surprised that China doesn't have more disabled infrastructure considering the leader is disabled. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You think you'd put more priority on it, right? Yeah, yeah, but that's, exactly. He's not physically disabled. No, no, really. just mentally. Yeah. Um, guys, take a look at this guy over here. <clears throat> what an interesting character. What? Can you, like, without context, yeah. explain to me what is happening here? What are those eyebrows? Yeah, we'll get into that. But this guy is, um, believe it or not, telling a bedtime story to a little child. Okay, before we get into this, I got to do some some sh uh, housekeeping. Sure. This was truly shocking to me when you found this. Mm -hmm. When you sh you found a whole propaganda campaign that sp uh, spans from 2017 to like 2021. Yeah, 2020, with 2021 with this guy. Okay. Yeah. He's still ongoing. It's still, yeah, I'm just saying, like, that's the, last, that's the last clip we saw. Yeah. So there was a good chunk that they used this guy yeah. to be a shill. Yeah. I'm talking about China Daily, which yes. is the one of the biggest, the biggest news outlets, state media outlets in China. Yeah. Okay. It's big. And when you found this, I was blown away at how disturbing and weird and tone deaf and effed up this was yeah. so what the you know the very basic gist is he's going to be telling bedtime stories to his daughter about china's belt and road initiative yeah and be okay? before we even get to that we've got him telling um his daughter about like the environmental progress sure now but i'm i was really disturbed that mm -hmm. he brought his child into mm -hmm. state media propaganda yeah. which is just really weird and kind of gross to yeah, me. Yeah. So I, I censored her out of the entire yeah. thing. It took me forever. Yeah. Um, but I censored her out of the whole thing because I don't even know it's publicly available and it's on YouTube for God's sake. We got to be the better. Day. We got to be the better people. It, you don't do that. Like, yeah. that's just weird. Don't, yeah. don't sponsor your child to be on state media. Right. Yeah. So, um, so we took her out. Yeah. Basically, here's it's the gist of it. Right. Yeah. Chinese state media is always looking for foreigners to use in their propaganda campaign. Sure. Okay? Because mm. as we've discussed many times in the past, and you probably know by now, it's an unfortunate situation in China that the word of a foreigner counts a lot more than the word of a local person. Even if the local Chinese person is like a PhD doctorate or whatever, and you just have some random foreigner who didn't even graduate from kindergarten, yeah. people will pay attention to what the foreigner has to say more. Sure. Okay, that's just the way it is. Yeah. And this goes for the government and the local population. And so this is why you get the whole white monkey job thing in the first place. Now, this guy went over to work for um, People's Daily, mm. ended up staying in Beijing. Oh, I thought it was China Daily. Oh, sorry, China Daily. Yeah, what okay. am I saying? Yeah. I always get confused sure. between the... They're the same thing. Yeah, yes yeah. and no. I mean, yeah, they're, yeah, they're both like state media. Yes. So he went over to go and work for state media, stayed in Beijing, had a kid in Beijing. And uh, so... Yeah. <laughs> so what they've done, we're going to call him Bob. This His is name's Bob. You'll see. Um, 
But basically, so what they've done is they're like, this is great. We've got a foreigner that works for us who has a kid. So let's use him and his kid for state propaganda. Yeah. So we thought we'd show you a little bit just to show you how out of touch. Dude, it's, it's so bad. Yeah. So, I mean, without further ado, let's play some of the stuff and we'll, we'll explain it as it goes along. Let's get us into the corner here. Um, oh, yes. Um, <laughs> this is just proof China state controlled media. Yeah. So it's China Daily. Um, China, China Daily's Belt and Road Bedtime Stories. I mean, that is so weird. <laughs> it's super weird. It's yeah. so weird. Yeah, so as you can say, he explains to his five-year-old daughter, okay, right, all this nonsense, yeah. We did take her name out. Um, we've taken her name out and her image out, like we yeah. said, because we don't believe in this. We should not be exploiting children like this no. for propaganda. No. Um, but weird. anyway. It's not her fault. Oh, Oh, this is we'll a little, no, we'll yeah, we'll back. come back to that. We'll come back to that. We've got to get straight into this dude, this weird dude. Come on, where is it? It's after this next next slide. I don't know why that came in there. Yeah, that's in the wrong. We'll get back okay, to that guy. Good, okay. There you go. So here's, here's a little sample. Let's take a look. Hey, Lily. So the next part of your class assignment is about China's environmental protection, right? Right. Well, the government has done a lot in the past five years to ensure sustainable development. What does sustainable mean? That means helping the economy grow without harming the environment. You mean making more stuff, more jobs, more money without making more pollution. Exactly. I know the skies have been getting better in Beijing. I can see it on my window day by day. That's right. We can watch the sunset over the mountains out of our window. And yeah, okay. I Where's just, the mountain? First of all, isn't that kind of <laughs> sad that your kid has to be, oh, the pollution's getting better out of my window. I mean, but... Yeah, you shouldn't have to say that. Then he lies about watching the sunset behind the mountains because... There's no mountain. It's just I pollution. I see no mountains. I see a lot of pollution. The sun went behind a building. <laughs> and there's a line of pollution. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> it's awful. Anyway, let's uh, continue. And the city's economy is getting better at the same time. So we can watch some videos of some interviews my colleagues did with some experts to learn more. Yeah. Okay. The government somehow has managed to take action. Which is... <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but yeah, this, you're a five-year-old kid and your dad comes to you. It's like, hey, we're talking about the environment or something. How about some interviews from my colleagues? And there's some dry ass Daddy, old man. Daddy, I want to, I want to go outside and play. Hold on, let's first talk about sustainability. This is what my colleague said, and he whips out an iPad, yeah. and he watches this dry ass old man interview. Dude, what does a five year old kid want to learn from Edwin Mayer, former anchor of China Global TV Network? This Who the old, hell is that anyway? He looks like a piece of jerky. You and know what this he's, is? His, Speech is just as dry as a piece of jerky. Okay. <laughs> you know what this is? What, what? It's a reason or an excuse to like pat people on the back and get their title up on the screen. So you're yeah. like, I was featured on blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, I love how he busts this out. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's just look at what he said there again. So I, I don't know why he just suddenly comes into this, by the way. It's like, oh, it's just, we can see the sunset. That. No, <laughs> this, this is completely uncut. The only changes we made were blurring out her face. Sure. Okay. So... <clears throat> we can watch some videos of interviews. So we can watch some videos of some interviews my colleagues my colleagues did with some experts to learn more. Dude, <laughs> no five-year-old kid wants to know what her dad's colleagues at work talked about sustainability and like economic did bullshit. With some experts to learn more. Okay. The government somehow has managed to take action, which has closed a lot of these uh, heavily polluting industries down. And she, she's obviously like really what engrossed. What? She's not gonna understand this yeah. shit. No, no. What are you showing your kid this? Exactly. It's not <laughs> even like they're not even like a graph. You'd expect like, okay, let's watch a video, and it's like, did you know China is getting better? Yeah, better it could means be like a ca cartoon factory or yeah. something that like hops bye away. bye fact factories make your toys. They are bye bye. You yeah, know, like that. Yeah, yeah, for a little kid. But no, it's some dry ass jerky man. You know what I mean? Join anyway. sustainability. It's getting better <laughs> every day. Wait, we got to hear. Like, it's yeah, fascinating. Sorry. This is how you talk to a little child. From the capital, and in the past year, I've noticed the air has become much clearer, much easier to breathe. It's a basic requirement for all of us to enjoy 
uh, our daily lives to know that the children we're bringing up uh, will have healthy lungs as they continue to develop. All right. Let's watch another one. <laughs> no way! Yeah. It was... <laughs> it's not fair, this poor kid! This poor kid! Wait, so he loads one into the chamber. Yeah, yeah. Pulls it up. It's Dry Jerky Man. Yeah. He's like, well, the air's getting cleaner because the factories are closing out. And you're like, shit, thank God that's over. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, all right. Let's watch another... His, you, you do his actions perfectly. He's so <laughs> awkward. Yeah, yeah, you gotta get a weirdo. Your eyebrow. I gotta get yeah, your I don't even know how that. We'll talk about I don't even that have later. Eyebrows. I can't yeah, yeah, exactly. I've never seen eyebrows like this on anyone. <laughs> never, not like another one. <laughs> All right, let's watch another one. Okay, guys, it's fascinating, right? This <laughs> poor kid. Say, make him say that. Okay, yeah, let's go back. Just I love that. Did that segue. cut? Yeah, yeah, there we from go. This. Yeah. They continue to develop. All right, let's watch another one. <laughs> the next five years. Things going to develop further as they are now. It, what? It's even wrong English. This poor girl. Probably environmental issues will get resolved to some extent. He said nothing. <laughs> it was like it was like probably, he wasn't even sure. Yeah, probably some environmental is issues mm -hmm. will be resolved to some extent. What does that even mean? That's yes. nothing. It's like saying nothing. No. Anyway. The people's life quality will increase. So, Lily, what did we learn today? <laughs> I learned how China is protecting its environment, how the government is closing polluting factories, and how it's developing sustainably over the past five years. Me too. I'm happy you can grow up healthier in a better Beijing. Oh. Me too. I love this quote coming out. Okay. This is my highlight. Okay, this is your highlight? Yeah. Okay, let's see. <laughs> 有可能我长大后，我能帮助世界保护环境。中国给人机会， any Chinese dream is possible for anyone. Pause that. Pause that on there. I just okay. love that quote. What that quote? Any Chinese dream is possible for anyone. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's the most xenophobic ass place I've ever been. I know it's terrible. Try you. You cannot immigrate to China. No. What is a Chinese dream? Moderate, moderate prosperity, prosperity. I what guess a, in a in a way, you <laughs> what know. What a great lesson to teach. I can afford children. a Big Mac, yeah, therefore yeah. I've achieved my Chinese mm. dream. Mm. I guess that's really what you can afford to a say. Big Mac sometimes. Yes, yeah, sometimes yeah. moderate prosperity. Moderate you know prosperity. what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, um, I was racking my brain as to where I'd seen those eyebrows before. Right. Right, and I kind of I think I figured it out. Anyway. So next. Let's look at the next topic for your class Lord. report. How Lord. China's role yes. in the world has changed over the past five years. Okay, Baba. So here they are. The next part of your class assignment is about China's environmental protection, right? It's exactly Cruella de Vil. It, it really is Cruella de Vil. It's He's just a male version of Cruella de Vil. Yeah. <laughs> Except with like wicked weird hair. Yeah. yeah. Somehow Cruella de Vil's hair is more normal. Yeah, I think that the problem is in China you get, you get disconnected. <clears throat> yeah, I because think, yeah. you're like, oh, far, far enough, how shy, but you look awful, you know, so you're just like, okay, I'm doing things right, you know, you never try to self improve, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I mean, he, what we learned is he, he got some, it was 05, he got the government, Chinese government award for like, friendship of humanity or some crap, mm. right? This is back when China was just, you know, if you were a foreigner in 05, that was rare in China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I there, just there got there many. beginning of 06. Yeah, you know how it is. It mm. was even rare when I went in 08, right? Yeah. So like 05, you think about it, like you get some meaningless award from the government and back home, you never got anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you're like, wow, this is the this is the future, right? I mean, you understand why people throw everything at it when they yeah. when they get some recognition like that. Yeah. But it's okay, kind of here's here's the the now this is just so creepy. Look, there's a reason that this we is weird. we blurred her face out is because this is just inappropriate, we think. Um, yeah, like state media in your kid's bedroom. State media um, filming little girl in a bed with her dad telling her so-called bedtime stories. But we thought we'd have to show you what these bedtime stories are all about. Yeah, it's the most fascinating thing for a kid to learn. Now, these ones, we um, cut some of the stuff out because it's very prolonged and boring yeah, and dry. Yeah, sure. Because it's about the Belt and Road Initiative, which is super boring. Right. But anyway, let's just take a quick look at what's going on here, shall we? Time for bed, sweetie. Okay, Papa. Now, Bob's gonna be gone. <laughs> I'll miss you. 
Oh, so his name's Bob. <laughs> yeah, it's Bob. Okay. But wait, wait, wait. So, okay, this is this is kind of okay. Yeah. He's gonna be what? gone for a few days this month. I'll miss you. Why? I'm going to attend a forum in Beijing on the Belt and Road Initiative. What's that? Okay. He's like, <laughs> he's yes. like chuffed. He's so pumped. He gets to tell the story. Yes. Once upon a time, several routes led from China through Central Asia to Europe. It was called <laughs> Silk Road. What does that have to do with the forum? Well, a few years ago, China's President Xi Jinping proposed making new routes like the old routes, but even bigger. It's called the Belt and Road Initiative. More stuff can move around the world more easily. How many countries? Over a hundred support it, and they've signed fifty agreements. That's a lot of fun things. Yes, and they want to increase globalization. Globalization? What's that? You know, that's that's what a kid, every kid wants to learn as a bedtime story is to learn about globalization, globalization and Chinese government initiatives by President Xi Jinping. Who uh, who thought this was a good idea? I don't know. I mean, I truly don't know. You know, my my kids <clears throat> recently turned three, so she's three. Mm. You've got kids in this age yeah, yeah, range, sure. yeah. right? This is the last thing you want to tell your kid as a bed as a bedtime story. Let's be honest. Why would you want to do that? Why would you? I wouldn't ever, tell them ever, anything ever about any that. government initiative. No. I tell them a, a story. They want to learn about like Winnie the Pooh or some yeah, adventure whatever. thing, or even like old the old school. Yeah, like, like Hansel people. and Gretel. I don't yeah. know. Just any, anything. Three little pigs. Actually, I I like to tell my kids this story. It's like the scorpion crosses this river and the frog <laughs> rides his back. You All know, right. you know who they should get in to tell this. Girl, mm. bedtime stories instead of this weird dude. Ooh. Puff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, Goldilocks. That's right. Because, I mean, at least with him, you know, you get some semblance of a bedtime story. It's completely wrong and mixed up. Yeah, but it's like but it's got not... elements of, like, a uh, child's story. Yeah, and it's yeah. not just like, hey, Belt and Road Initiative. Yeah. But, I mean, the, let's just see. Does this get any worse? That's where people from different parts of the world cooperate more. They buy and sell things to each other. And they visit and even live in each other's countries. Like we live in China. Exactly. Globalization is why you were born here. So well, why does globalization happen? It's good for people. We lead happier lives when we cooperate. That's why countries want to join the Belt and Road, and that's why they're holding a forum in Beijing so more people can understand it. I see. So the countries on the Asia Road want to join? Yes, but not just them. What? Okay, kiddo, it's late. So I'll tell you tomorrow, okay? Okay, Baba, I'm finished. Uh. <laughs> Time for bed, kiddo. Did you Should cut I... that? No, that's that's <laughs> how it is. It's that's, the song doesn't match his fingers in the ukulele. No, but nothing really does match. You'll also notice, like. We've blurred out the girl's face, but a lot of her lines are dubbed over because yeah, she obviously yeah, had sure. she made a for mistake sure. and they made her like repeat it. But Which one, um, can you blame her? No, she has to learn all these complicated <laughs> globalization Belt and Road Initiative forum words. Who serenades their kid with like a like a Mediterranean funeral dirge? I have no idea what he's doing. <laughs> There's something What's very that? strange about this whole scene. Okay, he just sits there playing and he's like, "Okay, time <laughs> okay, for bed." Time but wait, bed. It, it gets it gets better. Let's just play that. Time for bed, kiddo. <laughs> Story time. Ah, yes. So you see, <laughs> he just had the globe. <laughs> he just he had, had the there. globe like in his pocket. Yeah, it's like, oh, time for bed, kiddo. It's yeah. like story time. Ah, yes. Yes, globe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about globalization and the Belt and Road oh, Initiative. That's God. what I was waiting for. <laughs> you know what I mean? This guy's a psycho. <laughs> Why would you do this to your kid? Oh boy. Anyway, went from here to here, and the ancient sea route went from here to here. But you see, countries like the UK and Bro has stickers. Bro has yeah. stickers on hand. And He's ruining her globe. New Zealand yeah. and Argentina and Chile are part of the new initiative. People on this side of the planet didn't even know that the other side existed. I'm just like thinking, like initiative is not the kind of vocabulary that a young girl's going to have. Initiative. Yes, they're part of the initiative. Countries like Chile and you know what would probably you know? help? 
What? If he showed her some videos of his colleagues. Yeah, <laughs> they could help it yeah get some dry ass, like, goat, roast goat dude to sit there and be like, oh, this is being, like, seriously. Well, I guess to some extent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe. Maybe, mm, maybe yeah. <laughs> Anyway, let's see. Uh, does this go anywhere? Back when the ancient Silk Road. Wow. So it really is like globalization, like all around the world. Yes. But you know, some countries are moving away from globalization. Ooh, bad. Ooh. You, you know what? I, it was too long, but I cut out a part, a part where she asked, like, what about, a, you know, like, we're, like I'm America in Beijing. Right. And then he's like, yes, but America hasn't chosen to join the Belt and Road oh, Initiative. Crochet. Yeah. And he was like... That's why other countries are stepping up and doing it better, uh, that kind of thing. Nice. Real piece of work, this guy. Anyway, let's, let's continue. So the Belt and Road is an opportunity to move globalization forward, especially since a lot of spell building infrastructure. You mean for like cars and planes and trains and stuff? Yes. So where do they get the money to build all that? That's a good question, but a big one. I'll tell you tomorrow, okay? Okay. Hey, Lily. So, you remember your question last night about how they'll pay for the Belt and Road? God, yeah. do they just keep going with this? How many parts is this? Well, I mean, first of all, this is all a lie because if you look, it's not taking place over a span of a couple of days because they were in the same clothes. Yeah, true, true. Unless he's a dirty bastard <laughs> and he makes sure that his entire family <laughs> never washes their clothes. Yeah. Maybe he just says that he's a Tia Gongji, you know? He's like, a Gongji. he's like, you only get one pair of clothes, yeah. you know, and that's it. Yeah. Look, so, at, look at Bob. Can, can you just imagine that your dad's harassing you with this Belt and Road <laughs> shit every night? Seriously, it would piss me off. Your little kid with your, uh, like, horrendous monkey, whatever that thing is with a fool written on it and an apple, yeah. lucky apple mon monkey over there, give you nightmares, yeah. right? And your dad keeps coming into your room to push, like, government initiatives on you. Yeah. Not cool. Anyway, let's see how he explains this. I'm sure he's got a good explanation as to where the money comes from, For right? sure. Let's see. Yes! So, it's kind of like your piggy bank. How? Okay. Who puts money in your piggy bank? Me. And who takes it out? Me. Anybody else? No. Right. But this is a bank where a lot of countries can put money in and take it out. But how do they get more money? The things they build. Cooperation makes more. So, you have a piggy bank. The Belt and Road Initiative has created a big bank that everyone can put in and take out of. The money inside becomes more because they build new things that help all the countries make more money to share. That's a good idea. It is. <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, I, I, I kind of get where, where he's going with the whole piggy bank thing, but it's a bad analogy. Like, even for me, I have to think about, like, how, wh what is he even trying to say here? You know what it is? It's a bad topic. It's a very bad topic, but I like how she's like, that's a good idea. And he's like, it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? This guy's the most way. awkward man. I mean, he is incredibly <laughs> awkward. I really weird. hope that he's not like this all the time with his kid. But you know what? There's tons of propaganda videos with him and his kid. We'll be covering them in the oh, future. Gosh. And it does seem like he's naturally this bad with his kid. I just don't like that he, he, he accepted this. Sure. Don't do that. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, stop. Yeah, it is. But I, I mean, anyway, let's do this Make again. Make more money to share. That's a good idea. It is. But we have to let the world know why. That's why Bob is going to this forum. It is. I hope other people understand like me. So do I. That's why Bob is going to this forum. We'll spend extra time together after the forum, okay? Yay! Lights out, you two. Will you tell me stories about the Belts of Road after the forum, Peppa? Of course. <laughs> Bob is weird, dude. This this is a weird man. Oh, that's a, a weird, weird man. Weird man. You know, I'm just uh, I'm sorry to say, but you know, he creeps me out. He's a little too much for me. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like you know, wow, that's a little too much for me. You, you know, we've got people like Rick and stuff. Well, we does, can Rick, clown does he think he's good? You think? What do you mean? Oh, yeah, I, probably. Oh, wow, so good. Yeah, he definitely did. My, my thing is, like, somebody like Rick, you can clown on him or yeah, whatever, yeah, but, sure. you know, well, he's pretty harmless. This guy, on the other hand, is a bit off-putting. There's something about him. Well, you know, China picks off-putting people because 
there's not much choice left. I mean, think about it. Mm-hmm. This, this is the prerequisites. Yeah. You have to be a foreigner in China. That gets rid of 99% of people in the world. Yeah. You have to be willing to do Chinese propaganda in the face of all China's bad, rightfully you know, justified bad press. Yeah. That wipes off another, like, let's say, 80% of the foreigners in China, right? Mm-hmm. So you have this tiny little pool of people that are willing to sell their soul and get their family involved mm. to promote this evil, really effed up government that's committing genocide and ruining the world. And then say, on behalf of the Chinese government, say the opposite of reality yeah. in using your family to do so. Really messed up. Yeah. You know? I, I get it. But, you know, like, for instance, these Belt and Road videos were done in 2017. Sure. <clears throat> that's, continued. I mean... It it did. It yeah. continued all the way up. He's still making them. Yeah. He still makes, um, you know, he does things about the two sessions and stuff. He's still an active propagandist. But the fact of the matter is I could maybe forgive him for not really, you know, back then it wasn't so yeah, prominent, sure, like all sure. the, the genocide uh, accusations and all yeah. that. I mean, they were there, but it wasn't as prominent. It wasn't as, as yeah. bad. Yeah. But I do think that involving your little kid in Chinese right. state propaganda is a bit much. Don't do that. And it's Just ridiculous. It also shows you how tone deaf... Um, this is China Daily, right? Yeah. Shows you how tone deaf. Actually, we've got more from China Daily. They later. are a treasure super, trove. Yeah. So they're super tone deaf. Like, yeah. who would have thought this was a good idea? I'm, I would like to ask yeah. our audience. Yeah. Do you think this was a good idea to have Belt and Road Initiative bedtime, bedtime stories? stories? I mean, who came up with that? Do you think it's a good idea? Would this turn you, like, would this help you? Um, because I guess it's trying to infantilize the audience as well. They're yeah. like, everyone's a dumb little child, so yeah. we have to explain it like a little child. You know why? Because the Belt and Road Initiative is a mess. It's a nonsense it's mess. absolute rubbish. And so I guess it is difficult to understand because it's just rubbish. <laughs> it's so they try to dumb it down, right? Let me tell you about debt traps. You know what yeah. debt traps are? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you anyway. want to know what trillions of dollars failed down the toilet looks like? Yeah, yeah, this is what it looks like. <laughs> you know how to turn global opinion completely against you? Well, mm-hmm. let me tell you how Xi Jinping did it. Yeah, exactly. Wow, so that was um, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, um, no, it wasn't. Don't yeah. click, wow, that's so good because yeah, what's you'll on see the screen, something right? right now. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's not good. What we're going to do now, guys, we're going to move into our main segment. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be a bit dour, unfortunately, but we have to do it. It's our responsibility. So, soft power hour, guys, and this is where we talk about how China's trying to change your mind through various means and uh, ways and so on, and specifically now with the COVID restrictions lifted like that ripped off just ripped off ripped off the band-aid yeah they're now trying to pretend to everybody that it's a good thing and no one's really in trouble yeah so before we get into this what i want to do is the reason (laughs) that we're going to cover this is because what you won't get elsewhere is probably kind of the reasoning as to why china's doing what it's doing yeah currently (laughs) just a real quick synopsis before we dive into it the Chinese government it wants to brag now yeah. about how many cases it has. It yes. wants it's a government initiative right now to say yes, we are getting upwards of thirty million plus cases per day. Yeah, they're, they're bragging about that at a state yes. level yeah. to the people, while simultaneously saying, but there's only a handful of people dead. Yeah, you know, in Beijing they've they've claimed seven, right? There is an initiative right now to make people not report things. They've changed the definition of what means it means to be a COVID death. Yeah. And it's chaos. It's absolute chaos. You know, here's the interesting thing that I've found. <clears throat> is that before they ripped the Band-Aid off, the government's stance was, we cannot abandon zero COVID, otherwise, you know, millions of people will die. That yeah. was their whole thing. Yeah. And all the foreign shills and all the shills, all the propagandists were towing the same line. Mm-hmm. They were like... If we get rid of zero COVID, millions of people are going to die. Because the government initiative said we will never abandon yeah, zero COVID. But that's what I'm saying. Right. Now that they ripped the Band-Aid off, which was the wrong thing to do, rather than like slowly, slowly yeah. and making sure... Look, they've had three years to get the elderly yeah. people vaccinated. Those are the people that are dying. And, and to slowly roll something out of opening yeah. up. Right? Yeah, exactly. They've had three years, more than three years yeah. to do it, and they didn't. They just kind of... Put the lockdowns in place and they stuck with it and then they just let it go. They just abandoned it, right? So there's a big mistake on their point, on their part, rather than doing it responsibly, mm. you know? Anyway, um, now that we're seeing the them lift off this uh, the restrictions, we actually are seeing a lot of deaths, mm. okay? And it's probably going to come true that a million plus people are going to die. But now the state is saying no. We've got very few deaths, and so are the propagandists. And this is the annoying part, right? Say you are a Chinese state propagandist, okay, and you're just one of those guys, a shill, and you're like, 
millions of people are going to die or a million people are going to die or whatever. Why not stick to your guns? Yeah. Why do you always have to follow the, the Chinese government like a freaking puppy day, dog? One day you yeah. say, no, we can't do this. A million Chinese people are going to die. You're evil if you say that China should lift zero COVID. The next day they lift it, all these people start dying. And then they go, uh, no, they're not dying. It was good that they yeah, lifted it. Yeah, no, and, and the, the government has realized that it's yeah, not uh, dangerous. So we've Leave just, it to the experts. Yeah, exactly. So we've seen a flip-flop on, of course, the Chinese government and, of course, all of its supporters. And this for everyone should be a clear indication as to where um, these people's loyalties lie. And it also should be a clear indication as to the truth doesn't matter in China. No. It doesn't. No. Only, the only thing that matters is the government narrative. Yes. So let's, um, let's go through a couple of things, okay? So uh, start us over here. This is a very, very, very conservative estimate here. Yeah. China's likely seeing a million COVID cases per day, right? Mm -hmm. 5,000 deaths per day. Now, I just want you guys to have some perspective. Beijing is saying seven, seven. total. Seven total. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seven total, whereas real figures are showing at least about 5,000 deaths per day. Mm -hmm. The crematoriums are full. Yep. The hospitals are pouring out into the parking lot. There's no medicine left, and it's absolute chaos. Yeah. Oh, it is. Let's go through it a little bit. Um, now, remember, this is a very good example because when the whole pandemic started mm -hmm. it was the same yeah remember yeah. if you look at the graphs there's like a couple of deaths and then it suddenly flatlines yeah remember yeah it was it's a joke it's an absolute joke they were like no people aren't dying but we remember the reports from back then the, the crematoriums yeah. going 24 yeah. 7 and you could see it because of thermal cameras yeah. and stuff it really was happening these days all it's those, hard to lie yeah all of those funeral pots and stuff yeah. and all of the, the things i mean there was proof all the like millions of people's cell phone um, subscriptions that weren't renewed, for yeah. instance, it was pretty obvious that they were experiencing there were something. they were experiencing a lot of deaths. Yeah. Okay, but they didn't report them, right. and they reported them as something else. Oh, died of pneumonia, or died of complications, yeah. or whatever else. It's not COVID related, is what they were saying. But yeah. obviously, it was. Sure. So they've just gone back to that playbook. Yeah. Okay. Now, what we, you see here is some um, footage from a crematorium where they don't have enough space for, um, you know, to store the bodies. They just got them lying on the floor here. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is one of many of these clips that we've seen coming out of China. Now, CNN did a very good piece on it this morning. So we thought we'd go through it with you guys. We don't normally, um, you know, rely on mainstream media, but it was good. It was, it was better than what we yeah. saw. It was great. Yeah, it's, it's a very good piece. So... Um, let's take a quick look at this, and like I said, we'll go through it together. Can't go fast enough. The smoke behind me, it's been billowing constant. So By the way, she yeah, work. she does great work. She's a journalist in Beijing, mm -hmm. and she's often the target of all the shills and um, so on and so forth. But she's, she, she's very good journalist. Very good on the, on the ground journalist in Beijing. So let's, let's see what's going on. ...from all the bodies that are burning, and these crates over here, they're all full of yellow body bags. Workers later opened those metal containers here at a major Beijing crematorium, revealing rows of body bags as they load more coffins in the freezing cold temperatures. Crematoriums in major cities are swamped as COVID sweeps through the country, but China has only reported a small handful of COVID deaths since reopening late last month. I spoke to a man earlier who said that his close friend passed away from a fever. Normally, the hospital would hold the body, but the hospital told him that there were too many dead bodies. He said he's been waiting here for hours and he still has no idea if his friend's body can even get cremated today. There is a long line of cars that snakes around this whole area waiting to get into that cremation area. I'm in the parking lot right now and it's completely full of cars. I'm speaking here because there are many, many security guards patrolling this entire area. Grieving family members clutch photos of the deceased. Some tell us off camera they know their loved ones died from COVID and have waited for more than a day for cremation. Busy shops nearby sell funerary items with paper money, clothes, houses, and animals used in burial traditions strewn on the side of the road. I, I just want to say, um, mm -hmm. you know, juxtaposition here. When Beijing is claiming seven deaths and CNN gets a journalist to go rogue yep. inside of one one place and we're talking about the whole country that's getting covid right now right mm -hmm. tons of vulnerable people vulnerable people without immunities without vaccination plus 
uh, no access to the Western, you know, mRNA vaccine. The, the one that works. Xi Jinping said, no, we yeah. won't have that. Isn't that. He didn't care about his own people. No, of course not. They pushed the Sinovac, which was, yeah. you know, a little fear. bit. It was slightly effective against the first strain, yeah. but not yeah. Omicron. It's like no. completely useless. Almost, it's like, yeah. may as well just drink you need water. Three, you need three doses to have any effect, pretty yeah. much. <clears throat> anyway, uh, that, that aside. Um, I just want people to understand that when Beijing is claiming there's been seven deaths and CNN goes to one little one little crematorium and it's overflowed. Yeah. You imagine you got to think about 1.4 billion people scale at that moment. Sure. Scale that up. Mm -hmm. All right. Think about that. Yeah. And also, apparently, there's moderate rain in Boston, Boston Massachusetts. Yeah. Right watch out for that moderate rain. I'll <laughs> yeah, tell exactly. you what, we have moderate cold. It's like 14 degrees out mm -hmm. right now. Fahrenheit. Anyway, um, what's kind of clever is the fact that they are have interviewed people that sell funerary items because that's a good indicator as to what's going on, right? Yeah. So a woman who sells flowers. I think, hold on. That's one yeah. thing I wanted to point out. We we looked at all the coverage. Yeah. And we have anecdotes like videos from people sending. Oh, we us. got people sending us messages from within China yes. that their elderly grandparents or whatever yep. have passed away and that, that like it's pretty bad. They're not allowed to report if they've got COVID. They've yep. been told. This is why I thought, and this mm -hmm. is why we don't usually do this. So this is why I wanted to hone in on this Selena Wong report mm -hmm. because instead of saying, okay, we couldn't get Beijing to give us official figures. What they did was very clever. They hopped around rogue style and mm -hmm. went to places where you said, they're selling fun funeral items. Yeah. Where they're selling like paper houses to burn, where they're going to the cream of terms of the places that are not going to be official figures, but things that indicate something weird is happening. That was oh, yeah. good journalism. And I was looking into it. There's been a, a spike in funeral mm -hmm. services and yeah. all this kind of stuff, like a massive spike, like yeah. overnight. Yeah. And you, you can't explain that away with like, oh, you know, people just getting a cold or no. whatever. You know, this is absolutely linked to everybody yes. in the entire country yes. catching COVID all at once. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. As she's running out of stock, a man selling urns says business has jumped. Even the convenience store and the crematorium grounds is getting busier. Normally you aren't so busy, right? I ask. The man nods and tells me that normally no, no. there's nobody here. And it's not just in Beijing. Social media video shows crowded crematoriums and funeral homes around the country. <laughs> At this funeral home in Jinan, the man is saying it's going insane. Here it is packed with cars. Fans carrying bodies stretch all the way into the distance in front of this crematorium in Sijiazhuang. This is a COVID designated hospital in Beijing. There's been a steady stream of elderly patients in wheelchairs being led into this hospital. I spoke to a man who's been waiting outside for his elderly family member who he said is very sick with a high fever from COVID. But he said this hospital is running out of bed space. I asked the worker outside of this hospital, did a lot of people die here? Yes, every day, he responds. I ask, is it all because of COVID? Yes, people with underlying conditions, he says. China is now going through the painful reopening the rest of the world has already gone through, but it's not sharing the same data. The government now says it's narrowing the definition of COVID-19 deaths only to patients who died of respiratory failure directly caused by the virus. People, you, you see, that's actually a very important point. Very. So only if you die of a respiratory illness directly caused by the virus do you die. So like, let's say you you have an underlying problem, like you already are a diabetic or yeah, whatever the case. Blood pressure. Yeah, you have something, and then you get COVID, and it just kills you. They're like, that's not a COVID death. No. Which is stupid. Yeah. It's kind of like someone's sick and you shoot them in the head and they're like, oh, he died of a sickness, not of a yeah, gunshot. That's correct. You know what I mean? It's good so this is what China does to bring the numbers down, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what they were doing in the beginning of the, the outbreak as well. Right. Once again, we can catch them lying about stuff, the Chinese government. Sure. And it's to the detriment of everybody in China and the world. Yeah. Because it downplays serious problems. Conservative estimates, again, yeah. 5,000 deaths per day. Yeah. Conservative. Conservative, yeah. Seven total from Beijing. I yeah. Just got to keep drilling that home. How is it that they can say there's only seven deaths? We have we saw more body bags in this Bro, video. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in one, one in place. one container. They opened one container. There's about like eight to ten right. people in one container. And they were like containers everywhere. Yeah. And lying on the floor and stuff. But only seven deaths. Give me a break. We've had more than seven reports of just people that reached out to us. Yeah, people that that's we know. That's a joke. Yeah. What a joke. I yeah. mean, that's like, 
Kim Jong Il hitting nineteen shots for an eighteen hole course. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was ridiculous. We spoke to at the crematoriums may have said their loved ones died of COVID, but their deaths and so many others won't be counted in the official tally. So, um, you know, that's the thing. It's so disingenuous. Yeah. How are you supposed to um, prevent things like this from happening? How are you supposed to um, analyze the data? How are you supposed to prepare if the data's wrong, if they just cannot admit? You know, China has harped on for the longest time about like, haha, literally laughing at the United States. Look, a million people died in the United States. That's why our zero COVID is so good. They yeah. laugh at that shit. They've been throwing it out it's there the in articles. State media. State does media. It. That's because the United States has been honest mm. about how many people have died, and it shows you just how serious it was. Yeah, you know, and it's something that should be done by all countries, especially where the pandemic originated yes. from in the first place. Yes, if they're honest, if they were honest with the amount of people that were dying right in the beginning, people would have taken this way more seriously than they did. Yeah, for sure. The whole world would have been like, "Holy shit! Look at this thing ravaging China, killing so many people." Hundred percent. You know. Let's shore up. Let's make sure. But because they were like, ah, a couple of people died. The rest of the world's like, yeah, it's no big deal. Yeah. And it just it ravaged the world. It did. It's, a, it's bad. It's irresponsible. So what was the uh, U.S. ambassador's response? Well, he said, um, <clears throat> all of us in U.S. Mission China express deep sympathies for those affected in China due to the spread of COVID-19. Our embassy and consulate teams have also been affected. We support those suffering from the virus and those who have lost loved ones. I'd say that's a nice state response. That's diplomacy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, <coughs> I'm sure he personally believes that too. It's not just a di diplomatic no, thing. Of course. And, Same as us. Yeah, and that's something that I hope everybody understands is that this suffering that's going on in China right now is heart-wrenching. It affects, it affects us personally because our families are in China. You know, my... My mother-in-law, my father-in-law, and, you know, everybody else. My friends. My friends. They're currently under this situation. And it's awful. It's heartbreaking. And it's worrying and it's scary for a lot of people, especially elderly people. Like my my, my wife's grandmother is mm -hmm. vulnerable to this. And they're terrified that something's going to happen. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a big worry. Yeah. And we wish mm -hmm. nothing but the best for the people that are currently suffering um, mm -hmm. in China from this. Mm -hmm. And we hope, we just hope that this um, isn't as bad as we suspect it is. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, the Chinese government and Chinese state media and the pundits and the people that work for Chinese state media do not have the same compassion and feeling of um, goodwill towards the rest of the world, as we will find out um, over here. Let's first of all talk about the China Daily, okay? This is the same bedtime story... Bullshit state That's actually media. part of the reason we showed that. Yeah. Is to get you wet your whistle a little bit. This is Chinese state media. What does it do? Well, it is owned by the the central propaganda department of the Chinese Communist Party. Oh, interesting. So it serves a very clear purpose. <laughs> That's, yeah. yeah. I mean, seriously. Um, what does it say? You can read the editorial con um, control. What's that sure. about? Sure. It says, uh, scholars have described China Daily as effectively controlled by the central propaganda department of the uh, com Chinese Communist Party. Uh, ideologically ideolo uh, so it's very far away yeah. ideologically it tends to adopt similar perspectives to the people's daily according to the 2014 annual report china daily is formally managed by the state council information office which was formed by the central propaganda department i think yeah. you guys get the idea so it is just the central propaganda department of china mm. okay just like all state media is the state mm. and controlled by the state and guys this is the thing please and this is the reason we're telling you this. When you flip open your Sunday Times or whatever newspaper that you read and you see a little political cartoon. Oklahoma Daily. Yeah. And you see a little political cartoon in there and there'll be like a cartoonist draws like, I don't know, Trump as a hobo or whatever, you know, or draws Biden as something or whatever. That you could say like, haha, that like local paper did this. No. When you see a political cartoon in China, it's not some local paper artist. It is the state. It is Beijing. the propaganda department. Okay, because the Chinese Central Propaganda Department ensures that everything that goes into that newspaper is state sanctioned. It's state policy. And it is what the state wants. Yeah. Okay, so that's why we're showing you this. To draw this clear line and smack the Western ideas out of your head. Because a lot of people, they will look at some of the bad actions of China and put it down to, oh, it's a private this or it's a, it's a you know, just an artist or it's a company this. No, 
It is the state. Everything that they put out is the state. A lot of people do try to weasel weasel out because they use a Western lens. They say, oh, it's just yeah. a political cartoon. Oh, it's just an opinion piece. No, yeah, no, this no. is the state. It's the state. Let's have a look at what the state did last time. Yeah, so over the past couple of years... Well, this is okay. just uh, credit. Yeah, by the way, um, we got a lot of these next things you're going to see from a, a dude on Twitter called Whippling. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Yeah, Sean, Sean Haynes. Haynes yeah. Go check him out. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> let's uh, let's move on. Mm. Here's what the Chinese government has been putting out. Okay, so this was in December 21st, 2020. Yeah. It's it like, like exactly a year ago. Tough year for Santa, hashtag Christmas, and it shows like COVID basically ravaging the West. Yeah, it's that's the situation. Yeah, so yeah, this is direct state. Propaganda, yeah, by it's the way. very, very tasteless. I mean, yeah. you know, Christmas is a time of joy and giving yeah. and stuff, but they're, mm. you know, making fun of this. Um, Okay, so you can read this, uh, what's going on in the China Daily one. This is also May 2020. What did, it have, what did they say? It says, invitation to virus, hashtag China Daily cartoon. So it shows uh, an American hand, I guess Uncle Sam's hand, mm -hmm. going back to work, flipping up from lockdown. It says, hmm, uh, the coronavirus says, hmm, mm, I like this one too. Exactly. Because it means that when they go back to work, instead of being in lockdowns, um, everyone's going to be infected. Yes, and then what is the juxtaposition over here? Well, this is from 16th of November, 2022. The South China Morning Post, which is actually controlled by um, China, belongs to China now. Yeah, in, in many ways. Yeah, it's based in Hong Kong, but it's actually owned by China. Yeah, Alibaba. Right? Yeah, Alibaba, which is China. Yeah. Um, says China must keep its resolve to ease COVID-19 rules and reopen the economy. It's just showing a, a juxtaposition, how they make fun of or they insult yeah. the West for doing something, but then they do the same thing and it's okay. Yeah. Right, we got a couple more of these. Okay, this was in um, this year, January twenty twenty two. Yeah, China Daily cartoon, sad reality of hashtag COVID nineteen in hashtag US, and it shows a shopping um, center with all of its shelves completely bare. Yeah, and it's got like little little COVID uh, nineteen viruses with the Statue of Liberty's torch and stuff. You know, yeah. that kind of nonsense. Meanwhile. If you take a look at the picture on the right, I'll get us out of there. This is from this past week yeah. in China, where the literally all of the shelves have been stripped bare in pharmacies, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and, I mean, you don't... Here's the thing. You don't see the White House putting out a cartoon about China being like... Oh, it's all stripped out and show a panda bear or something with a virus jumping up and Crying down on. Or something like yeah, you don't you don't see that, right? No. That's because the Chinese state, the Chinese government is an immature child. Yeah. And disgusting, insulting piece of shit. He likes to laugh at other people's misfortunes. Um, here again, China Daily, this was in October 2020. Surrender to chaos. And um, you see Uncle Sam sitting there saying, we're not going to control the pandemic. And of course, the virus is running around, smashing things and, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then if you take a look on the right from December 20, uh, 2022, this China will stop releasing comprehensive data on new COVID cases after the dropping of mandatory testing meant the numbers no longer reflected reality. So now they're doing exactly the same thing. But it's all OK as long as China does it right. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. No one's going to come and uh, make a shitty political cartoon about China doing this because no one else is that petty. Yeah. And other people actually have compassion, other countries. Certainly not the state. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> I mean, of course, you'll get some fringe like, yeah, lunatics on the far left and the far right will make shitty stuff. Sure. But, um, you know, actual the White House is not putting out a press release because that's what these political cartoons in China are. It's like as if the White House re released a press release. Yeah. That's, it is. That's it's right. the state, right? Okay, what do we got next? Um, here we have in November 2022, so not that long ago, a China Daily cartoon. Heads in the sand while COVID beats them. And it's got like, a, I guess, a Western politician or something going shouting at the screen because it sees uh, zero COVID going on. Meanwhile, the virus is kicking his ass, that thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> On the other side, it's no secret that messaging in China comes from the top. In Jolly, uh, Li Jianzhao and Hua Chunying, the CPC have two firebrand spokespeople and prolific tweeters. How often have they written about COVID on here this month? 
and then he goes to basically just show how hypocritical this whole situation is, you know? Um, burying their head in the sand. Correct. Just burying their head in the sand. They're not talking about it at all. What's that called? Projection? Oh, yeah. In fact, it is. Projection! Let's get back to this. Again, China Daily. Which strategy is more risky? And they've got the United States coexistence strategy in Uncle Sam's being overrun by the coronavirus. And on the right, zero tolerance strategy. And it shows, you know, Chinese um, medical workers defeating um, a virus with swords and shields and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then on the right, China Daily residents in many cities, including Beijing, Guangzhou and Chongqing, which have experienced mass infections recently, have embraced the optimization of control measures in order to bring life and work back to normal. Again, it's just hypocrisy. Absolute hypocrisy. Um, got a couple more here. Yes or no to COVID-19. Quarantine, ICU. No quarantine, ICU as an intensive care unit. It's got like some no-mask guy being thrown into the back of a van. And then we see coronavirus. China's hospitals seem to be filling up from the WHO. Um, these are just, again, showing you. Another one from the China Daily, also from January this year. U.S. medical system under siege, and it shows the virus like a massive tsunami, like about to knock down a paper hospital. And then on the right, we say, amid crowded fever clinics, patients urged to use internet service grassroots facilities in China. Because the Chinese medical system is currently under siege. You know? Yeah. Again, it's just, it's horrendous. Do what, well, I mean, we can go on and on with this, can't we? Yeah, it's just a lot of hypocrisy. It's really. just it. It's tit tit for tat, BS. Yeah. But um, it really just shows you how insensitive and shitty uh, the Chinese propaganda department and the Chinese state is. Yeah. Because you're not seeing any official um, U.S. or any other country's media, like official state media. You're not seeing the BBC doing this. That's no. state media. Yeah. Right? BBC's not going out there and saying, like, ha ha, look at how many people are dying. Remember what they you suck. China, the Chinese state did to India? Laughing at. Oh, know, yeah, remember they, all the deaths. And they. And they. Oh, yeah. And they also did, like, brown face. They remember did, that? They did that as well. <laughs> I mean, Never come forget. on. Yep. So, yeah, we're not, we're not going to read each and every one of these things out to you, but it's just so ridiculous um, how awful they are. It and, was relentless what they did. Just yeah. pest, being a pest. I mean, just insect of logic, you know, like just buzzing around people going, eh, we don't have COVID, but you do. Bzzz, yeah. You know, I mean, look, the it's Chinese just, state is disgusting. It's in, it's just horrible. <laughs> it's no diplomacy. Mm. I don't understand why um, the rest of the world takes China seriously no. and why they even have diplomatic Chinese relations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. When yeah, I say China, I mean the Chinese sure. government. You know, when I say, oh, negotiations, negotiations with the USA have broken down. I'm not like talking about USA people. I'm talking about the government, right? Good. Yeah. You know what anyway, I'm saying? Of course. You know right. what I'm saying? Like when I say China makes a mistake, I know. I'm not saying like, oh, Mr. Chen, who I'm not walks on the you. road. I'm just throwing it out yeah, there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's for people who might not realize that out yeah. there. But why are people taking this government seriously? They mock people who are suffering yeah. because it serves their propaganda yep. purposes. Why even do that? They, they don't care about their own citizens. Though. I know, they don't but, even let them claim their death. No, but why mock why mock people in your overseas media? Because China Daily is supposed to be the international we like make friends. Yeah. Let's know? let's go project to it's it's kind of like if we um in the United States or wherever had a Chinese language newspaper <clears throat> that's only for Chinese people <clears throat> aimed at Chinese people living in China. Yeah. And we'll start mocking them. You know, because that's yeah. all it's doing is they're just mocking the rest yeah. of the world. Yeah. It's awful. In a you vulnerable know? time. Yeah. And no one else is doing that to China. And, and look now. No one's doing that to China no. now, that China, now that the shoe's on the other foot and China's yep. suffering badly. Yep. Here we go. A, it's like a replay, dude. It's a replay. How is anyone investing in this country? How yeah. is anyone being diplomatic with this government? If you're, if you're associated with the Chinese government, dude, I'm sorry, but you're the devil. Like, yeah. It's sick. I'm not even not from a religious perspective. It's evil. It's just an yeah. evil enterprise. It's an evil government. It's bad. Yeah. Chi Chinese people are great. Chinese yes. culture is great. Chinese food is great. China as a country, the actual country it's itself, great. it's great when it's not hor horribly like polluted and stuff by the sure. stupid policies put in place. Um, but it's great. 
the Chinese government is not great. And all these stock bros that are like, oh, it's a great time to invest in China now. Yep. What are you doing, guys? You are feeding this government. You are Feed giving, you are handing them money. You're like, hey, we're rewarding you for, you know, completely screwing over your own mm. people. Yeah, and, the rest of the world. Yeah. First of all, locking them down in these draconian mm. lockdowns, which have led to mental health issues, suicides, led to people burning to death inside of buildings, led to all sorts of terrible things, destroyed the economy, destroyed people's livelihoods, destroyed people's businesses. And then irresponsibly, just because you don't know how to do it the right way, ripping the Band-Aid off and now giving everyone COVID and tons of people are dying. Yeah. This is who you're That's giving money at. to. That's where and you're at. like, I'm rewarding that behavior by investing in you. Yeah. You stock bros out there have no morals. Greedy ass bitches. Seriously. Stop. Okay, stop supporting the Chinese government. <laughs> yeah. All right? Do you not see what you're doing? You're rewarding Apparently a not. serial killer at this point. Yeah. It's awful. Like a pathological narcissist liar serial killer. You're just like, oh, I like you so much. Here's some money. And then you're like, okay, ooh, that's bad. The market's bad or whatever. You back off. And then you come back and you're like, oh, you're good again. Yeah. Stop. It's ridiculous. It's regarded as we being shouldn't bad. be. A, it should be illegal to invest in Chinese stocks anyway. It should be illegal to invest in China right now. Yeah. Under the current actions. Seriously. Would you invest in the Soviet Union? Would you invest in Hitler's Germany? I don't think so, right? There, of course, there were evil people that were doing Some such people a thing. did, yeah. But guess what? History proved them bad. Yeah. And we can learn from that, right? Yeah. And you go, look at those villains. They invested in Hitler's Germany. And then you go, are you investing in you know China right now? Then shouldn't you be held to task? There's yeah. currently a genocide. There's current. They're currently wiping out a cultural identity. They're currently, uh, you know, erasing every single last bit of human rights freedom that w that existed in China. Yeah. They're turning it and plunging it into a, a dictator pariah state. They're turning it into a massive, horrible, horrible place to be for its own people. Yeah. And then they're also trying to influence negatively the rest of the world and yeah. infiltrate your country. So And destroying the environment. And what are we doing here? Raping the seas. Yeah. It's like taking all the IP, using yeah. the money that you invest in to build weapons. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I mean, like, <laughs> are, are we learning from anything here? I mean, when the pandemic started, there was a lot of lessons to be learned at how... China was able to mold global organizations like Clay to make sure that people didn't even think it came from China. Yeah, the and WHO. Then, and, and allow it to spread, right? Yeah. Right? And then three years later, after all of these things, all the, the you know the stuff was uncovered, and exposés were done, and scientists talked about it, mm -hmm. and everyone like came together and like, holy shit, maybe China's really, really, like the government doesn't know what they're doing, and they're actually pretty evil, and they only serve their best interests for themselves. You'd think after three years of lessons, we would learn from that. But we're watching a replay of what happened right at the beginning of the pandemic happen in China oh, again. Oh, dude. And, and in more ways than one. Again. Yeah, in more ways than one. Guys, Daigo. You know Daigo? Yeah. Disgusting. I can't stand Daigo. Daigo are um, people that basically scalpers, I guess is yeah. the best way to put sure. it. You know, like you wanted to buy that PlayStation 5 for the last two years, but you couldn't. The PS5 is just not available because yeah. there's some douchebags who go and buy all of them. Yeah. And they go, like, they find out when it's going to be for sale or something. And they... Yeah make an inside contact or whatever, and they just buy them all yep. and hoard them and sell them for double the price. Yeah. That's a Daigo. Okay. Yeah. Now, what happens is um, usually you will find Chinese students or Chinese um, tourists or just Chinese people living abroad. They find out what mm. is currently really uh, in demand in China. Mm. So anyone who's lived in Australia knows about the milk powder shortage. When I say milk powder, infant formula. Yeah, formula, yeah. You know, because after the scandal in China, no one in China um, trusts the local milk, I mean, the infant formula anymore, yeah. right? So any Chinese person living in Australia, a good way to make money is to go into the shop, buy up all the tins, and then send them back to China. Illegally, of course, because they don't pay customs or whatever. They just ship them in the post as if yeah. it's like a normal thing. And they make tons of money because mm. they can sell it for triple, mm. four times the price, right? But this led to a situation where you would have hordes of... Chinese students and and um, like aunties and uncles waiting at like 4 a.m. in front of a shop, <clears throat> waiting for the door to be open so they could rush in and grab every mm. milk, I mean, every um, formula, infant formula off the store mm. yeah. shelf so that they could go and sell it. And it meant that the local people in Australia couldn't, the mothers couldn't get infant formula for their own children. That's right. Um, and this was a big deal. They had to start locking them up and like you certain amounts per person and they still found ways around this. Yeah. They'd stand like a like a chain that one would go in and yeah. um, they had all gangs like infant formula gangs in Australia yeah. and 
um, elsewhere around the world, New Zealand, everywhere, because it was such a massive industry. We saw this at the beginning of the pandemic as well, when they were buying up all the N95 masks and PPE and stuff like that from Home Depot and stuff to ship back to China. Mm -hmm. And remember, we actually helped donate some to China. Yeah. Okay, we helped. We sent money to to a guy and so that he could distribute masks and stuff. But the problem is they take the piss and they bought it out. Mm. And this was before the pandemic hit um, the shores of the U.S. So they bought out all of the PPE and sent it back. So when it came down to like us here in the U.S. and it was a, a situation where we needed to get masks for our families and stuff, we couldn't get them. Yeah, they just weren't in the shops. Yeah. Well, guess what? The same is happening now, except with flu medicines and cold medicines and things like that. Yeah. In China right now, <clears throat> all of the shelves, we showed you the, that picture earlier, all the shelves are empty in the pharmacies. Doesn't matter what, how mild, any kind of cold medicine or flu medicine, anything like that to deal with symptoms of COVID has been completely stripped off the shelves. Not only in China, but Hong Kong, so neighboring countries too, mm. neighboring uh, regions. Um, and they're doing that now overseas too. And you know, Xiao Hongshu, which is this app. I was going through Xiao Hongshu and there's pictures of people. And luckily, I mean, and rightly so, you've got Chinese people calling them out yeah, sure, on the app saying like, look at these mm. shitty Daigo. And you've got some <coughs> uncles and aunties going into all the pharmacies around the US, like CVS and Walgreens and stuff, and just buying everything, putting it in a massive shopping cart, like taking them out, buying everything off the shelves. Yeah. So... My advice is to anyone out there, make sure you have some cold or flu sure. medicine in your house. Sure. Because let's just say um, we get hit by another wave here or there's mm. another big strain or something and you need that kind of fever medicine or whatever. Yeah. If you go to the pharmacy, it's not going to be there because they would have been bought up and sent to China. Yep. So just go get some for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just saying that because we're seeing a repeat of this. I'm seeing this now daily on Xiao Hong Shu. Yeah, people, I agree. They're taking pictures of, um, you know, the Daigo in various, you know, Costco or All over, yeah. wherever. And they've just filled, they've taken every Sam's last Club. box off of the shelf mm -hmm. and filled their, their shopping carts, you know? Yeah. So be careful of that, guys. It's true. Anyway, um, what have we got here? Uh, this is just a, a screenshot that's going around WeChat right now. Mm -hmm. Do you want to... You want to read the translation of that? Sure. I uh, let me pull it up because I I didn't have time to translate it, so I'll just do it here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I got just like a quick one. Right. Uh, so this is on WeChat right now. Mm -hmm. Basically, what's going around is people are trying to deal with the whiplash of the government saying, "Hey, uh, COVID is the end of the world," and then now saying, "Oh, it's not even bad anymore. It's just a kind of flu, and yeah. you'll be, you'll be fine. You won't die, and don't worry about it. Get back to work." Right? Sure. So people are like, "What? What are you talking about? This is insane!" Right? Yeah. yeah. So there is a uh, rumor going around that mm -hmm. says that the new coronavirus, this this one that they're currently dealing with, is um, man made. Okay. okay. And the, it was a scenario from the United States government. Well, look, the original one's kind of mm. mad made anyway. I mean, yeah, it was manipulated, right? In a, manipulated in a <laughs> lab in right? Wuhan, Wuhan Virology, yeah. you know, Institute of Virology with uh, good old. So, anyway. what was, uh, what's in, in these seven points, right, is the US's plan? Okay. This is according to, this is spreading viral around like I, I and Shushu groups. Yeah, okay. So, I, this is kind of like middle aged people are spreading this around what you're seeing on the screen. Hi, the first point of the plan is to hire cyber troops from Taiwan and other places because they can speak Chinese, right? Mm -hmm. To vigorously promote coexistence. So, you know, not getting rid of lockdowns. Yeah. And let mm -hmm. China give up dynamic zero COVID policy. Okay. That's the first plan. Of okay. The, US. the second is that China will uh, abandon the dynamic zero COVID policy and open the borders. And then Omicron will spread. Okay. okay. After Omicron is spread all over the place. Then they'll infiltrate and they'll they'll spread a highly transmissible, admissible, and highly lethal strain that's been prepared and put in a certain domestic transportation hub. Okay. So what they're saying is because everyone will be preoccupied with Omicron, the U.S. will slip in like an actual deadly version. And mm -hmm. why are people believing something like this? Well, because a lot of people are dying right now. Sure. But the government's not reporting it. Sure. So they're coming up with conspiracy. They have to. Number four. Mm-hmm. The new st strain will gradually like, overtake 
uh, Omicron mm -hmm. and will eventually become like the most pop, uh, not popular, the most widespread strain, uh, kind of mutant strain in China. Mm -hmm. And the high fatality rate uh, will completely destroy the hospital, like the hospital treatment system in China, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so it's, it's basically like all the stuff that's happening, but with conspiracy on top of it, because they can't, the government won't explain it. Yeah, right? unfortunately, there always has to be an excuse. Yeah. Five, continue mm -hmm. to hire cyber soldiers to instigate themes such as uh, buy everything from pharmacies, mm -hmm. uh, social disorder, yep. uh, and uh, stopping factories and, and production, right, in China. So, like, spread those as rumors, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> name the uh, new strain with high transmissibility and high, like, death rate as the China mutant strain. Okay. That's what they'll name it. They're going to name it yeah, the China mutant strain? It. Okay. And then exaggerate the high lethality of the Chinese mutant strain. Uh, and then they'll say that it can attach to the surface of Chinese goods, like, as they ship them around. Okay. And they'll call on countries to block Chinese flights because it'll be transmitted That's what they from China. did. <laughs> Didn't they, didn't they, like, hang on a second. <laughs> okay, while you're dying of a coughing Sorry. fit over there. Um, remember, they stopped all the goods coming in from mm -hmm. certain countries because they blamed it for bringing COVID in. Mm -hmm. Frozen fish and whatever else, shoes and things like that. Remember? Plastic lids. Yeah, bottles and bones. These guys were blaming that and blocking it, and they were also not allowing any country to fly into China. Yeah. So this is, again, just like... hypocrisy? Super hypo hypocritical. So uh, then they're going to call on countries to block Chinese flights, permitting the sale, prohibiting the sale of uh, Chinese products, and then kick it, or goods, I should say, and then yep. kicking China out of the uh, international supply chain. And then seven Chinese funds and enterprises will return to the United States, and the U.S. will achieve their goal in the trade war. So it's just a U.S. <laughs> conspiracy. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, look. I quite like this conspiracy, other than the, the the part about people actually dying and catching a disease or whatever. I think that this is sounds nice to be able to move a manufacturing out of China. Yeah. Because why do we have to keep putting up with all this crap? Why are people always politicians always bending over backwards for the Don't CCP? Talk tripe. Yeah, exactly. Don't talk tribe. Why is it? It's because of, you know, everything being made there. So stop having everything being made there and then we don't have to put up with this shit anymore. Yeah. You know? That'd probably be best. I think so. China should stand on its own merits. Yeah. You know, if China wants to behave badly, then people can not take it seriously. If yeah. they want to behave well, people can take them seriously. If they want to be diplomatic, there could be diplomatic ties. Not this wolf warrior garbage where they laugh at people who are dying of COVID overseas. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, just... Uh, just saying. But yeah, that's a stupid conspiracy. Yeah. Completely. And again, just to remind you, the official mm. responses we're seeing coming out of the USA anyway, and I'm pretty sure everywhere else in the world, is that of support for the people of China and everybody who's going through a tough time there. And that's our message, hopefully your message too. Because at the end of the day, it's the Chinese government who are the assholes here, mm. not the people of China who are suffering under that shitty government. And I know a lot of people say, well, you know, the people don't stand up, so they invite that kind of government. It's not like that. No. The Chinese government is this all-powerful, you know, top-down leadership thing, which if you try to stand up against it, <coughs> they're so well organized at putting people down, you yeah, know? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's just, it's a Herculean task. It is. It really and that's is. why it takes so much courage for anyone who stands up against the Chinese government ever. These protesters that went out there with the white papers and stuff are some of the most courageous people you'll ever meet in yes. your life. You have no idea because it's not like in the West, Western people are spoiled that go out there and protest. They think they're doing something special or whatever. They're not. It's like going out and eating fast food. It's something that everybody can do. There's nothing stopping you from doing it. No. If I want to go protest on the side of the street here with a sign, I can do it. Yeah. I can go to Washington, D.C. and stand on the steps with a placard that says, Not far. We can just you know, literally exactly. drive over. And just go there and say, like, you know, hot dogs suck and, right. and hamburgers are better. Yeah. I can do that. Nothing's going to happen to me at the very least, like the worst case scenario. I'll be called, the cops will be called and tell me to move on because I'm a nuisance or something. Sure. In China, if you go and try to protest anything, you're putting your entire future and your entire life at risk. Yep. You know? So right. you always have to put that into perspective. That's true. Mm.
Well said. Anyway, um, so that's our main segment over, thank goodness, because it was a dour one. It was, yeah. Let's uh, let's move on. We shall. We're we gonna move move on to Wumao Corner, guys, where we talk about what the haters are up to. Um, <laughs> okay, hang on a second. Let me just. Uh, you've made a, a new little segment. Um, Yes. thing over here it's called you? crossing the red line okay now this is something you hear about in china a lot by the way <laughs> you've crossed the final red line yeah. Are you're crossing the red line yeah this is the chinese government basically whining about somebody doing something they whining. don't like yeah it's like a it's like a oh yeah you've crossed the line now buddy but then they don't do anything about it and it's kind of hilarious how often this happens yeah you have any stats on that Oh, it's just it's like every day. <laughs> I remember, I remember reading like you know when it comes to the Taiwan yeah. uh, red line. I oh, that's about like, this. Yeah. Oh, it is about yeah. this. I remember like a, a while ago, I was read like how many hundreds of times the Chinese oh, yeah. government has said that in the last it's year. It's increased like exponentially since Xi Jinping. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at your new little thing that you put together here. Here it comes. Welcome to Crossing the Red Line, where we talk about China warning, uh, erroneous, erroneously warning the U.S. of something, okay? okay? It doesn't have to be the U.S., it can be really anything, but... Yeah, we'll be throwing this in every once in a while, whenever it comes up. Yes. Uh, Wang Yi, the guy that looks like a marionette puppet, <laughs> yes. um, he, he said that the uh, United States must stop its old routine of unilateral bullying. Okay, what do you think this is in reference to? Well, it's about Taiwan, okay? Mm. Wang Yi on Friday accused the U.S. of trying to suppress China's development, by the way. So a little chip, a little chip-related thing. Oh, the chip thing, yeah. Washington must pay attention to Beijing's legitimate concerns, he said, and warning the U.S. against trying to challenge China's red lines on Taiwan mm -hmm. using salami-slicing tactics. I mean, I just thought that was too good. Seriously. Projection! Too good not to include. Mm-hmm. Accusing the U.S. of salami slicing Taiwan policy How? by selling weapons and stuff. Okay. How is that salami slicing when China is actually salami slicing yeah, in the India. South China Sea and, and India. India? Yeah, that's what they do. Yeah. It's everything they do, they accuse other places of, they always do themselves. Yeah, for those of you who don't know what salami slicing is, it's like it sounds, right? It's like a little sliver at a time. So what will happen, for instance, on the border of India is the Chinese troops will move like a wall or they'll they'll put up a chinese flag like yeah. a, about a meter into the territory of um india and say oh that flag, was yeah. that was always our yeah, territory. Was part of the ancient map it's like no no you've got it wrong like that is actually our territory and then they'll put troops there and they'll set up a base and you'll be like what the hell that was our territory and then when i don't know the indian guys are asleep they'll move it another like a couple of inches and they keep doing that same within the south trying to see they're like oh yeah you know that was actually always ours and they keep moving the the nine dash line thing. They put that in there. And they, yep. oh, this this island actually that has always belonged to us. You know that yeah, kind what of you're talking shit. about. It's always been part yeah. of. Yeah, they love doing that salami slicing. So they always accuse other people of doing what they do. Yes. R ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, let's keep going. Okay, guys. Um, now, I'd like to ask you if if I see milk, if I tell you to go jump in a lake, what does that mean to you? Um, I would say that, let me think here. I would say that probably means like you want me to just go away. Kind of, kind of in a rude way. That's no, not rude at all. I mean, like, I mean, no, I mean, not in like a malicious, I mean, like yeah. as a joke, it's Yeah, fine. yeah. I'm saying though, if you meant it, like seriously, it just mean like piss off. Like, because like, guess, like you, you know, like I, I, we've, I've used this before. Like you'll be like, oh, I love this triple IPA or whatever. I'm like, I'll oh, be like, ah, oh, go lake. jump in a lake. Yeah. It just means like, get out of here. Take a hike. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same as saying take yeah. a hike. Yes. It really is the same. Same thing. Okay. Well, not according to Twitter. <laughs> okay. well, I'll tell you why. Okay, guys. There is a very dedicated group of people that want to shut me up and want to shut you up too. And they're, of course, the Chinese ultra-nationalists, but of course, also the shills that work for um, the Chinese government, especially people like this dude. The coronavirus is 100% under control here right now. It's a very timely piece. Um, but I <laughs> made a tweet where I said, these stock bros need to go jump in a lake. And I was replying to a tweet that was talking about how people are jumping at investing in China again, just because China sure. said, oh, we've released, um, you know, this, whatever it was, we were relieved uh, auditing on this or something. Sure. 
So it's just like, come on, you know, this is my stance. I just said it earlier. I can't stand these stock bros that prop up the Chinese government every time, just dump billions of dollars into the Chinese government just because they're greedy. Um, so I said, these stock bros need to go jump in a lake. Now, because people are reporting each and every one of my tweets as abusive or whatever, they choose everything. And there's a dedicated team that do this. Twitter said that I violated their rules against promoting or encouraging suicide or self-harm. To say jump in a lake, yeah, take because, a hike. Yeah, because I told, I said, these stock bros need to go jump in a lake. So because I said that, I'm promoting self-harm and suicide. I don't know. I When I think of the saying, go jump in a lake, I don't think of it as in like, go drown yourself. I think of it like, hey, you know, go cool off. You know, go jump in, go cool off, go jump in that lake. You need to just cool off. It's a hot day. Yeah. All right. That's it. But yeah. no. So you see, once again, my Twitter account was suspended for like 11 hours or something for doing that. But they try everything they can to try and censor you and me. And they flag the shit out of everything we put out there. Our YouTube videos, our tweets, everything. And it's just, once again, shows you how ridiculous this whole situation is that we have to deal with. Because... We do not have a dedicated team of people on our side flagging every single propaganda tweet that comes out from the Chinese government or every single propaganda tweet that comes out from these shills, you yeah. know? Shills. Shills, yeah. We don't do that, okay? So it's one-sided. They have resources to try and censor us on Western social media, yeah. which pisses me off. Yep. But I just wanted to show you this absolutely ridiculous um, example of how this works sometimes. Sure. Anyway, so be careful, guys. If you tell someone to go jump in a lake on Twitter, you're uh, promoting self harm and suicide. Sounds like a nice invitation. Yeah. Anyway, hot day <clears throat> like today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Speaking of shields, what um, did this shield do? <laughs> we've got a China state affiliated media guy over here. All right. He works for Shanghai Daily. Okay. And he's one of those guys that defends China no matter what the circumstances are, sure, right? Sure. And again, lives in a bubble and doesn't actually, is not connected to reality. Sure. So he releases a tweet that says, um, debunk. There have been a few Western media reports claiming China's COVID situation is dire with fever cl clinics overflowing and people dying left and right. Let's go take a look together. Please retweet. So he made a video about driving down to his local Shanghai something like a clinic okay wherever you are. i didn't watch i didn't watch the video to be fair um but that's the gist of it is sure. he goes down it's like look oh there's no one here 24 hours later a day or so later this is his tweet district and city level hospital fever clinics are facing sustained pressure amid a surge in the number of patients in shanghai and a shortage of medical staff many of whom uh them have themselves been sickened by COVID 19. Uh, their advice stay at home or in your community so just wanted to show you once again, the truth doesn't matter in China. Yeah. The only thing that matters is the, the narrative from the government. Yeah. So the narrative of the government is everything's fine. Mm. No one's dying. We don't have a problem with fever clinics or anything like that. It's just evil Western media bias. Get this clown goes out there and he's like, oh, look, see, debunking it. But the next day then he's like, oh, actually, you he know. He doesn't say I was wrong. No. No. That's the thing. Because the narrative hadn't caught up with him yet. Yeah. But then sense. the next day it's like, oh, you know what? Now the government is admitting that there's problems and we need to tell people to stay at home. So then he tweets the truth. The previous day was a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's uh, just another example of how ridiculous it is. You cannot trust Chinese state-affiliated people. No. You can't because they just... They can't say what they want anyway. They can't. They just speak out of their ass. They can only say what's acceptable yeah. um, by the Chinese government at that, in that given day, yeah. in that given hour and minute. In that given second. Yeah. So <laughs> this one's hilarious. Um, remember, we were showing you the funerary items. Um, Which is not hilarious. No, that's not hilarious, but actually it is. Screw that. It's super hilarious. It's like one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. In China, they've got a tradition... Um, when someone dies, you can send them gifts in heaven. Mm. You don't use DHL. Yeah, it's wild. What you do is you buy something that's made out of paper. Yeah. And you burn it. And then it, it up. ends up somehow 
uh, in your ancestor for them to use. Oh, chilling in heaven. Already. So that's wh why you've got something. It's called hell money. It's actually called hell money. It's like fake paper money that you burn. So you're sending money to your relative so that they can, I don't know, pay hell? rent. No, I don't know why it's called hell money. I guess it's just a bad <laughs> translation. Sure. Um, but it it gets ridiculous because you can understand it probably had its roots in some very traditional Buddhist or, you know, whatever, Taoist or of whatever it was, um, you know, source. But now it's changed. So now you can burn paper cell phones, you burn paper iPads, you burn paper cars, you burn paper houses, you burn paper mistresses. That's one thing. Like, why would That's you weird. Why would you want to send your grandpa a freaking mistress? Shouldn't he be with his wife? Yeah, isn't that a bit out of turn? Yeah, it's a bit whack. It's like, hey, grandpa, here, have some fun. Go cheat on your wife. <laughs> in I don't hell. understand. Yeah, I don't in get hell. it. But what I'm saying is it's ridiculous. It's turned into this absolute dog and pony show. Sure. Sometimes I remember... Um, uh, a friend of mine's relative died and we went to one of the funerary services. They had a freaking house. And you know, not just a little house. It was massive. It was like taller, it's a, as tall as a single story house. Wow. It was like a jumping castle, you know, for kids. Yeah. It looked like, like a that. a burnable thing. Yeah. And it had like a car and everything outside and they burnt this. It was massive pollution. They just created pollution. Oh, yeah. They just polluted the whole area sure. with grandpa's gift. Grandpa's gift. Okay. But this, this is what happens. Okay. So... There's something very uh, heartwarming and quaint about this tradition that you want to send stuff to your ancestors. I like that. Mm -hmm. But there's also a ridiculous side to it where it's just become, who's burning a gold watch, paper gold watch, and a paper cell phone, and a paper laptop? You know? I can tell you. It's kind of lame. Yeah. It's, it's like when a tradition has become capitalized and yeah like it's, it's like when it gets bastardized capitalization yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. you call it What's, yeah i get you, you know what commercialized. i'm saying yeah it's been commercialized that's yeah. it you know you're burning like nike fake mm -hmm. nike shoes or whatever yeah it's just crazy and then the rich remember the rich people in china there was that story that woman burnt real ipads and real phones yeah. and stuff because she was just rich yeah which is like dude what are you doing anyway yeah so there's an unfortunate situation where a lot of the middle-aged people are very uneducated in China. Mm. This is due to the cultural revolution, devolution and stuff. So they burn this crap everywhere, mm -hmm. right? They'll be burning these these like paper houses and paper cars or whatever on the road, on the sidewalk. You see it a lot on the sidewalk. I've actually got a lot of footage. We should have put that in, but yeah. I'll, I'll throw it in next time. Burn a lot of these stuff on the sidewalk. They burn it in the like median of the highway. They burn it everywhere that they can. Sure. But sometimes they burn it in your building. Yeah. So this dude who posted on Reddit, he was like, F this, right? Yeah. You'll see. Let's just watch the video. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, so I mean, it's, guys, especially recently in China, there have been these stories of people burning to death in their buildings. Because it happens often as well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, during the lockdown, that yeah, was what sparked sure. off the protest. Huge problem because there's like bars on the windows and stuff. Yeah. Uh, emergency rescue, can't get there properly. Half the time, the fire hydrants are fake. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? Right. Yeah, it's not a good idea to be no. like starting a massive fire no. in your apartment building. That's not a small fire that's going on it's there. It's big. Right? You could burn the place down. <clears throat> so, I mean, sure enough, it's it's concrete uh, wall and floor yeah, there. Still... But it doesn't matter. It could catch anything on anything. fire. What if there's something nearby and then the door goes The door's out. got couplets on it that are burnables, wooden and stuff wooden that's door, over there. Yeah. You just don't start a massive bonfire in no. your stairwell Probably in your building. Yeah. Okay. So the, the guy, obviously, his fire alarm was going off in his apartment. Yeah, he's, he's like, like, what the F? What's going on? Walks down there and sees that, like, someone's burning their joss paper and stuff Yeah. in the staircase. But this is, um, again, this is just China. If you live in China, you understand that this... Yeah. Where is that, that saying? T-I-C. This is China. T-I-C. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just kind of want to see that one more time. It's very satisfying. Spray. Yeah. 
I mean, here's the thing. I respect other people's traditions and cultures, sure. okay? Mm. But there's a difference between respecting someone's culture burning someone and down. dying and mm. the whole burning, like building being burned down because of someone's ignorance. That's that's a difference. Yes, yeah. right there. That's a threshold. Yeah. <clears throat> You're going to put everyone's families at risk because you want to send some, like, fake money to your grandpa? Go do it outside, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. not in a fire hazard area. Yeah, don't. Don't yeah. do it right outside do it in like a your bucket. apartment door. And do it in a metal bucket outside. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we get the idea. Yeah. Let's write it down. We got a lot of material to get through here. We're oh, we going did? way over. Okay. Let's uh, let's move on. Let's, let's pick up the pace here. I was just cherishing the moment. No, you should. Um, mm-hmm. One thing I have to say is that uh, we had a fantastic show on Monday. Oh, dude, yeah. Bono. It in, I will quote people, the best thing, quote, we've ever done ever. <laughs> okay. So, and we didn't expect it to get such a good response, but it was so much fun. Yeah, let's just give you guys it's, a bit of a recap quickly. So, um, yeah, this is our Monday Sometimes show. Sometimes they don't really get the translations correct. <laughs> <laughs> it looks very squishable. WWE style, WWF style royal rumble brawl with yes. all of the main <clears throat> lore characters from the china show slash adv china welcome to the royal rumble oh it's me yes, you get to fight mao <laughs> <It's Mal. laughs> that guy that looks like me what's yeah, going on you're kicking something. my ass what's ricochet doing over there yeah oh there comes the show oh. Xi Jinping. what Xi Jinping? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> so we had a WWE Royal Rumble with every main China show lore character. Yeah. Rick. Well, you know. Wow, so good. Yeah, Clan Man. Oh, yeah, he was in there. Oh, sure. Yeah, oh, Zhao sure. Lijian. Yeah, we had like hey, Subway Wonder dude, Man. Subway like Wonder Man. Subway anyway, Wonder it was Man. Uh, basically each character drew uh, when they're supposed to enter the ring, and the last person in the ring wins. If you want to go see it, go to patreon.com slash ADV podcast. I highly recommend you you watch. You didn't have to watch it live. It's still up. You yeah. can go watch all the other episodes. Join us at the Xiaoban Ho tier. I promise you it is worth watching. Yeah. It's one of the most fun things we've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. It was super fun. Everyone's it. there. Yeah. It's uh, it's, it's kind of like we're going to make it a Christmas tradition. It's going to be a Christmas Every tradition. Every year we're going to have the a brawl. Royal Rumble. Yeah. The brawl. We'll see who wins. Royal Rumble. Um, right. Yeah, so... <laughs> Go join the Shaban Ho tier if you'd like to join us for our VIP show every Monday. It's so much fun. So and fun. we will be having a show this Monday. Uh, even though it's holidays, we're going to be there. So yeah, we'll be there. Yeah, join us if you can. If you have the means, we'd love that. It would be great. Yeah, it would be absolutely great. Anyway, um, time for us to continue with the show. Yes. And we're going to move on to Worldview now, which is where we talk about everything in the world, specifically with regards to China. So um, what have we got going on here? I just <laughs> Oh, you know what? Before we get onto this, we we have to explain everybody who watched our episode last week um about the AI. Remember? I am AI, Sarah AI. That you know the AI, mm-hmm. AI thing? Well, I actually was looking at it again. That footage because I was going to make a sound bite which I haven't made yet because I was busy with other stuff, but I noticed in the Sarah AI, you know, the young guy and the beautiful, that one? Yeah. Mm. At the top, it says MetaHuman, 64-bit development, Unreal Engine. So, But this is supposed to be freaking Huawei. It's supposed to be Huawei's AI. Yeah. So I was like, what the hell, Unreal Engine? So I looked it up. And um, there's some MetaHumans thing. It's just a freaking plug-in for the Unreal Engine. <laughs> so, so it's nothing to do with anything. No, it's just a bunch of BS. They bought a bunch of like commercially available software and had a booth babe with a microphone behind there. Yeah. It just once again debunks all their bullshit. Yep. It's supposed to be cutting edge Huawei AI and it's Unreal Engine, which has got nothing to do with Huawei. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It got nothing to do with AI. Yeah. That's what they're using for their front end there. So just just notice that it's out there they're so sloppy they're so sloppy it's just fake of course it's fake it's rubbish i mean and the fact that they left that in there i love that they didn't cover that up or blur it out at least they couldn't like full screen it or something yeah it's and you know what it's um by the trial version it, i'm pretty sure it's a trial version a beta version or it's some kind of like uh i don't know pirated version they love to do that yeah true but just once again guys like don't don't believe anything that comes out of Chinese state media about their high-tech, cutting-edge technology. Because all it is is Western technology that's been knocked off and reverse-engineered or something. Yep. Yep. 
Seriously. And I wish it wasn't the case. Yeah. I'd be in China's corner if they were doing things right. Yeah. You know, if they were actually making advances, I'd be like, yes, this is good. But mm. they're not. No. And every time they claim to be, it's easily debunked. Nope. Anyway, if you haven't seen our AI uh, episode, don't forget to go check it out. It was last week. Last week, was good one. Super fun. Um, anyway, where were we? <coughs> Let's get to our. Um, Sorry, we're going a little long today. Yeah, hey, it's Christmas special. Yeah. We go a little long. Um, and there we go. Okay, what's this all about? I just thought this was hilarious. I don't <clears> even <throat> know what this is other than World Socialist Website, which okay. is a uh, just a great name, mm-hmm. real on the nose, I guess. So who's responsible for China's COVID catastrophe? So this is the new outbreak. Okay. A tragedy of monumental proportions unfolding across China as a result of the Chinese Communist Party lifting its zero COVID policy and embracing forever COVID policy demanded by U.S. and European imperialists. (laughs) So wait, what? Okay. So it's it's the West's fault. So because U.S. and European imperialist powers demanded it. We Westerners demanded it. No. Of course. I just thought that was a great... Here's the thing, though, like the rest of the world was telling China forever that its zero COVID policies are ridiculous and it's the wrong way to go with this. They did not say, oh, cancel everything overnight and just throw everyone to the wolves. Yeah. They did not. No one ever said that. No. Okay. No. No (laughs) one said do anything. No. That's what China did because they were afraid they were losing control. That's the the Communist Party. So I just move on from there. I just thought that was a bit interesting from a global perspective. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Unsur- uh, actually, surprising news. Very surprising. Uh, after the Safeguard Defenders report about the global Chinese police stations, uh, mm-hmm. Italy stopped joint police patrols with China. Yeah. Uh, Italy had the biggest, or the largest amount of Chinese police stations and did and, tro- joint yeah. patrols. And they did joint, they let the Chinese police come walk around mm-hmm. in Italy or whatever. Wild. Wild indeed. So that's good news on that front. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> also... Uh, we forgot to cover this. This was actually in, a, in an episode like four weeks ago we had planned. Yeah, we planned we, to do it. We keep putting it in the next note, so let's finally do it. Okay. Uh, Chinese government intelligence officer sentenced to 20 years in prison Yeah. Uh, for espionage crimes attempting to steal trade secrets from the Cincinnati from Cincinnati company. So this is aerospace uh, related. Yeah. Um, they got him, and I was, cr- I was surprised to see such a long sentence, which was great. Yeah. Uh, finally, some deterrence tactics for ip slash uh spy it's just espionage yeah, it's straight up. it's just espionage um and so the, the whole thing was he approached employees and paid people and stuff to yeah. um you know get information um on i think it was like fan blades or something in in um uh, jet engines or something along those lines yeah. yeah and uh they set up a sting and basically it was an agent that went to go and meet him yeah. and met him overseas mm-hmm in a extradition friendly country and he's actually mss so he's like the yeah. cia of china yes went to go and pay him and get these um secrets and stuff so they nabbed him yeah need good. more of this um and the article is a doj article the official articles in the description if you yeah, want to read it's through. a good it's read interesting, it's yeah. a very good read forgot to cover it before so. yeah anyway yeah there's a lot of these kind of things which slip under the radar which it's yeah. always good to oh, see actually one thing i wanted to point out is he looks like he's from 1999 to 2001 new metal band okay uh, with that goatee and that yeah. kind of look so i just kind of i i enhanced his appearance to match his aesthetic no i think that's probably what he has to do to fit in in america these days you know these days 20 years ago we're talking about <laughs> corn limp biscuit you know aesthetic. i feel like it could be doing like a kids reading at a, at a public library or something now <laughs> anyway let's move on <laughs> i like his weed earring yeah it's, it's hilarious <laughs> Uh, this is interesting. This is mm-hmm. something for Turkish people to look into. But uh, mm-hmm. a Turk, a Turk, mm-hmm. a Turkish person, Turkish citizen, an old Turk, reached out, uh, very concerned, mm. and he said that uh, recently he's been seeing a shit ton of pro-China propaganda being tr- uh, translated into Turkish, right, um, mm. out of nowhere, really just overnight, and it's pop- popping up in bookstores and potentially mm. in the education sector. Which was really out of left field. He said it doesn't make any sense. Um, there's no real put. Doesn't look like there's any sort of push for that. Um, and nobody has a renewed interest in China and Turkey. And all of a sudden, this is springing up and it's weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and I corroborated that with another person. I asked another Turkish person. I said, have you been seeing this kind of stuff? He said, yeah, it's super weird. Thanks for bringing that up. So we wanted to put that out there. I don't know if any Turkish people could explain this to us. But 
books on Xi Jinping thought, all mm. this stuff getting translated overnight, really springing up across the country. Certainly not a delight. <laughs> Definitely, it's not a delight to hear this. I've heard this. rumblings about um, a lot of Chinese investment in Turkey recently. Yeah, yeah, we did hear about that. Mm. Um, just something to pay attention to. It's a NATO member. Uh, probably shouldn't be infiltrated by China. Probably not. No. Anyway. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Have we got anything else in here? Um, we yes. do. I just wanted a little perspective. Um, you know, when people say, you know, the Chinese economy is so important, China's huge, China's this and this and this, that's true. Yes. Um, just wanted you to understand that China's propaganda does play a part in that. And mm -hmm. I want you to understand the sheer scope of the U.S. economy, just to look at one company. Mm. This is Apple, right? Sure. It's the sheer scope of how big one company in America is compared to Chinese companies. And you think about Tencent, which he, which is huge. Tencent doesn't even make up, you know, a, not even a quarter mm -hmm. of Apple. And you, you look at Guizhou Maotai, which is huge. ICBC Bank. I mean, all these things yeah. don't even add up. Alibaba. To, Alibaba don't even add up to Apple. Oh, of course. All of them, all of them together. together. Just some perspective to always keep in mind that China wants you to think that it's on par with the U.S. economically, and it's just not. It's no. just not. No, it's not. Uh, despite its tries. Yeah, look at that, hey? 2,139 billion, which is what? A it's a jillion, really, if is you it? think about it. Or it could be even a, a bazillion. You, you see, like, it. I get lost after the, the millions. You get lost in the sauce. I'm just like, yeah. you, when you say trillion, I'm like, that's a lot of millions. Yeah, I know trillion. Once you get past the tr like a hundred trillion, like when you're in a thousand trillion, I don't know what that. So is. I don't pay attention because like I know I, I know like I'll never, I'll yeah. never own that. Like no. I'll never be a whatever. I won't even be a millionaire. So like no. when you get to trillions and stuff, it's like what's the point? Whatever. Let's focus you're on being a ten thousand air first. Yeah, exactly. I think that's <laughs> what we go for. Yeah. Like, yeah, you work. You move yeah. the goalposts. Yeah, you do yeah. as you go. Sure. Uh, then you learn about the numbers. Anyway, anyway. my math sucks. Um, you can attest to that. So uh, I guess let's this... have a Christmas chat. Yeah, it's time for our Q and A, everyone. This is when we uh, have a chat. We uh, I get to loosen my tie, which is nice, um, and we get to answer your questions and you question our answers. So for those of you that are not watching live and you're not watching on the weekend, um, it gets cut out of the show on Mondays, and we'll see you next time. So stay awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> so just, let's do it. All the people saying quadrillion, like just a teat there.